Welcome to Empower to Grow, the podcast. I am your host, Hanan Al Basha, the business doctor. Following our conversations with empowered women who woke up one day and consciously claimed, I am more than enough, I am worthy, I am empowered to grow. And along their empowering journey towards realizing their own potential and their quest for growth, they became a beacon of hope and guidance for others. May you also find your inner power to grow. Hello again, everyone, and welcome to the Uncharted Discussions episode of Empowered to Grow podcast. This is your host, Hanan Elbasha, and I'm still sharing the stage with a very energetic Dr. Gayla Gorman. Dr. Gayla, hello. <laughs> Hanan, it's glad to, I'm glad to be back here to continue the discussion. It's been fun so far. Yes, yes, so much fun. Thank you for that. Uh, Dr. Gayla is an acupuncturist, she's a naturopath, and she's an author. And this is where I wanted to start the conversation, the author part, because I'm very intrigued by um, the title and what you talk about in your book. And you're talking about kryptonite and how to avoid the toxicity of that for being your version of the superwoman. And we know kryptonite and Superman, that's, you know, that's his enemy. That's what sucks the life out of him. So would you please tell us a bit more about your book and, um, you know, kind of the value that uh, people could take out of it, women especially, could get out of it by uh, reading it? So um, just to let everybody know, if you're not familiar, the title of the book is What's Your Kryptonite? And the subtitle is Manage the Toxic Stressors Threatening Your Superwoman Status. Mm -hmm. So when I was um, working on the book, I have a process whenever I write a book where I um, do a deep blueprint. So I know generally what I'm going to talk about and um, and everything I want to cover. And I was working with um, a coach to make sure that it you know, hit all the marks, right? Um, It's important if you're going to write a book that it's something that people look at and want to read. It's not going to do me any good to write a book nobody wants to read, right? (laughs) And so so I was talking to this coach about what I was going to cover and why it was important. And at some point, I just landed on this kryptonite idea. And he was like, that's it. He's like, go back. What were you saying there? Um, And so then I just started describing what kryptonite does to the superheroes, right? And and started tying it all together. And so it just ended up on the cover, right? (laughs) So if you've seen the book, um, it's kind of a beautiful picture of crystals that look a little like kryptonite. Um, because uh, kryptonite like is everywhere in our world, right? Like we wouldn't necessarily recognize it unless we are aware of how we're feeling and when our energy is being drained. And so one of the things I um, share is that like for Superman or Superwoman, often they, they're not just staring at the kryptonite. They're not saying, oh, there's kryptonite. Oh, let's wait and see if it's going to drain my energy. What's yeah. happening is their energy is draining and they're saying something's draining my energy. There's got to be kryptonite around here and I've got to like track it down before it totally takes me out. Right. Mm-hmm. So, um, so I think that's just such a fantastic analogy because our, our, human battery just gets drained little by little. Mm -hmm. And as we start to recognize that um, we were talking earlier about this, you know, kind of spring in our step that we want to maintain, right? When we start realizing that that whole spring in our step is um, like the springs, I've lost a little bit of their (laughs) Um, there's something that's draining our energy, right? And there just are so many potential sources of it that, um, we, there are some things we can do that will just naturally 
free up some resources and allow our energy to rise. But then if we're still finding that we just can't get to the bottom of it, it's likely some form of toxicity. Yes. And I evaluate 12 different categories of toxins. So toxins are a super broad subject that we really could never cover in exactly. the time we have here. Yeah. But um, but just know that it's a big problem. And if if you're feeling that your energy is being drained by something, don't ignore it. Don't just drink another cup of coffee and try to, you know, yeah. artificially boost yep. your energy. Yeah. yeah. Get to the bottom of what's draining your energy. What is your kryptonite? That's exactly it. And I think this was one of my biggest lessons through the health coaching journey. And I think it's still ongoing because it's opened up so many doors for me and changed the way I think. And it was always about masking the symptoms by, you know, the, the bandages and stuff and just hoping will go away whilst you're actually got a gushing neck wound underneath there and thinking that bandages are just going to just kind of mask it for some time and just take care of it. And you've got to do the work at a point in time. You've, you've got to stop. You've got to take the time out and you've got to clean out that wound and you've got to sew it up and you've got to nurture it back to life. And I think I was talking yesterday, actually, um, on a talk just about that topic, just saying that you can ignore it for as long as you want. But at a point in time, it's going to catch up. As you said, it's the kryptonite. It's going to deplete you. It's going to bring you down and you're going to have to stop. And that time, it's not going to be a choice. It's going to be by force. And I think for women, because I know this was part of my story was, oh, no, no. Um, you know, and I, I used to actually get the... Um, the title superwoman from people I meet, you know, I wake up at five o'clock in the morning and take my son and stuff. And I used to be proud. I was like, yeah, of course I'm a superwoman. You know, I'm yeah. doing this. I'm, I'm on duty. I'm on the go 20 hours a day, whatever it is. And, and I was proud of it. And I hadn't realized that that in itself was draining me because I never stopped. I was always deprioritizing my health and my wellness and time out and all of this, just saying, I can't afford that time. Um, yeah. Until there's a lot of people, there's a lot of people depending on us maintaining our superwoman status, exactly. right? Exactly. And so, you know, at a certain point, um, you won't be able to maintain your superwoman status unless you take care of superwoman. Yeah. Right. Until you take care of That's woman, to, it's just the woman, yeah. forget yeah. about the superwoman, woman, woman, right? Yeah. The woman can't be superwoman, you know, exactly. like, um, if he's not got something to work with. So, and I know that this could sound like lux luxury for a lot of people and, and a choice they don't have, you know, there are, and we understand that there are women who are sole providers and they're taking care of families and they have, you know, bills and they've got the multiple jobs and all of this. And I don't think, I know from my experience partially, and I'm sure you could share a bit more from, from the clients or stories or excerpts of the stories uh, from the clients you're working with. It doesn't mean that you take the two week resort retreat style and take time out of your life. It just, it really could just be three minutes a day to do a breathing exercise or to journal, as you said, or to do meditation. It really is very, very small incremental steps that support you to, to kind of, I think, work your way towards wellness and, and healing and happiness. What are your thoughts on that from, from your perspective and your experience? So it's more than three minutes, Okay, <laughs> um, but it doesn't have to, it doesn't have to be and isn't some extended um, vacation. In fact, a lot of people use the vacation idea as a way to just keep doing what they're doing and think in a I'm different take setting a long weekend <laughs> yeah. I, I'm going to take a long weekend and I'm going to reverse all the damage I did in the last three months in a long weekend yeah. and I think most of us can relate to how <laughs> that long weekend goes we overdo it to prepare for the long weekend we go 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 having fun <laughs> during our long weekend and we come back needing a vacation from our vacation and feeling like we need to 
catch up from the several days we've been away. So yeah. um, that is not a strategy <laughs> to mm. use. Um, rather, I encourage everybody, and this really doesn't matter whether you're a man or a woman, but I think it's even extra critical for women. Um, it's that period of time from seven in the evening till 11 in the evening that is your sacred time. And I'm not saying you have to do nothing during that period, but you have to gain control over that period. Hmm. And that means, you know, what, when is your last meal being consumed? When are you turning off the screens that are um, affecting your um, circadian rhythms? Yes. Um, you know, what kind of emotional disturbances are you allowing into that four hour period? Um, that period of time progressively from seven to 11 is leading up to the, our sleep period. Yeah. And um, from, especially from 11 PM to 5 AM is when our bodies are hardwired to do rest and repair. But mm -hmm. that few hours before that period is when all those signals are happening so that when sleep comes, our body knows what to do and doesn't waste the first few hours of sleep confused because um, we didn't do the preparation. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, women will say, I'm barely getting home from work at seven o'clock in the evening or, you know, um, you know, Dinner that's my wind down time, time yeah. when I'm on the screens. And, um, and I will just say that it's really non-negotiable. I'm not, again, I'm not saying that you have to completely do nothing for those four hours what I'm saying is that you have to gain control over those four hours and treat them at, with the reverence that they should be treated. You know, a lot of us, as we age, start to develop sleep issues mm -hmm. and the sleep issues are because <laughs> of this extended period of time years of not managing this period of time from seven to 11, right. And in the evenings. And so, um, so when we try to do things to improve our sleep, you, you can't improve your sleep when you're sleeping. Okay. Like yeah. you, the, the, how our sleep is improved which is when our body does all of its repair and rejuvenation, okay? The sleeping part is the easy part if you've taken care of the period of time leading up to sleep. So sleeping happens naturally. Um, if sleeping's not happen happening naturally for you, it's the period of time before sleep that is in need of some reworking and attention. So your your recommendation would be the seven to eleven because that's usually as you said that's getting back from work that's dinner putting kids to sleep you know winding down on all of this rather than it being kind of one big muddled time frame in the day to be to approach it with a lot more intention and consciousness to structure it out so it serves us leading up to the winding down and the sleeping and that would be more useful for us. Yeah, I think um, one of the things that produces positive effects without question is making our last meal earlier, Yeah. Um, as close to seven as possible, really even earlier than that is better. But when we are eating after seven, our bodies are not designed to eat during that period of time. Mm -hmm. And so um, uh, I was on a, another call recently and I, you know, this is a, an issue that I deal with with patients as well. You know, when they, when I tell them that they need to not be eating after seven o'clock, they're like, you know, I don't know how I will do that. Right. 
And, yeah. um, and so um, if you find that you're getting just really uncomfortably hungry, if you're not eating, let's just say in the window of time from like 7 p.m. to 7 a.m., you mm-hmm. should easily be able to go 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. without eating. And um, that's when your body is designed to not eat. Okay. Yeah. And, um, and so if you're finding that you're getting really hungry, it's because your body is not good at switching from burning sugar for fuel to burning fat for fuel. Mm -hmm. We all have plenty of fat on board to use for our fuel source. And that's actually the most efficient fuel source, um, to use but our body goes after sugar first because it's easier to burn. And Mm -hmm. so whenever you're finding that you're getting really hungry, it's because your body's um, pissed (laughs) that you haven't given (laughs) enough sugar recently. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm sorry. Throwing a tantrum. No, no. Yeah. It's throwing a tantrum. tantrum. Uh, Very good. It's throwing a tantrum (laughs) saying, give me some sugar. Now remember sugar is not just a soda or a cookie. It is a bowl of rice, bowl of cereal, potatoes, anything that turns to quick sugar. Okay. Um, so the hunger is your body throwing a tantrum saying, give me some sugar. If you can find some ways to kind of soothe yourself through the transition period, and in the beginning, when you've trained your body to run off of sugar, that is kind of a challenge. Yeah. But um, if you if you find some ways, typically you can drink some hot tea or, you know, um, herbs. I'm drinking herbals. Yeah. Now. <laughs> yeah. And so that will help to sort of soothe yourself through that period of time. Right. And then, um, see if you can't get through the, um, that kind of immediate, um, um, triggered spell, right. And, and move a little further down the road before you reintroduce food. But, you know, and I know this was true for myself, I would wake up in the middle of the night and um, and be uncomfortable and think, well, if I would have eaten later, I would not be waking up in the middle of the night. But the truth of the matter is that if I have given myself enough time to burn off the sugar and my body has like recognized that it's gonna have to use fat for fuel, I sleep like a baby through the night because it's got plenty of fuel to run off of. It's just that I have trained it to bark for sugar every few hours. Right. (laughs) So then you wake up in the middle of the night and you're like, wow, I should have just eaten a topped off the tank before I went to sleep. And, um, and that just is, um, um, uh, long-term accumulates ill effects. Yeah, I love that. Dr. Gayla, thank you so much. But I can't hang up with you. I know I know. I want to respect your time, but I have one last question. Sure. Because you brought up something that is very, very important. And I know a lot of women also go through that thought process and go through the fear of switching their career around, following their gut and their intuition and their what their heart is telling them that this is this is what they're meant for. And you spoke of um, switching from a career that was over nearly 20 years in accounting and being a CPA and having your own practice and office um, and into saying, I'm going to work on wellness and I'm going to approach it from a different perspective, taking care of women. Can you kind of just share some of them? I want to say not necessarily the thought process, but what were the fears and what were the motivations you were going through then to be able to say, I can do this and follow through? Uh, that's a a really great question. And I can tell you that just like anybody else listening to this, the transition through that period was, um, 
really rough. Let's just call yeah. it that. Um, I, <laughs> in the couple of years leading up to that, I had been feeling more and more like something had to give, something had to change. I knew I was being called to something different. And, um, and, you know, I had an accounting firm with, you know, a dozen employees, a partner, um, uh, we were well-respected in the community. Um, there was nothing wrong with yeah. my work situation, other than the fact that I had this discontent that was just growing by the month. Mm -hmm. And, um, and so in 1997, I went on a, let's call it a spiritual retreat. I went to Brazil for a few weeks Yeah, and I can remember sitting there thinking, you know, there's nowhere else I'd rather be mm -hmm. and my life will never be the same. Yeah. <laughs> and I came back from there, told my partner that, um, that I had been, you know, he, he knew that I was really struggling to kind of figure things out. But, yeah. um, I said, if you're ready, I'm ready. If we want to kind of figure out how to, um, I didn't, I never yeah. wanted him to feel taken advantage of, you know, mm -hmm. that basically I was going out finding myself and he was trying to hold the fort. Right. Yeah. So, um, so anyway, I, I stepped out at that point in time and, and just like I shared with you in the first half of this, you know, the message I wish I had had at that point in time is give yourself two to three years mm -hmm. of doing mostly nothing but soul searching and really crafting your plan because mm -hmm. I tried to step out of one thing and into another thing and it was really um counterproductive yes. and and so taking that time developing a practice of self-reflection Yes. And um, and hearing what's coming from um, your intuition and your internal guidance, um, that is an incredibly powerful way to make any big changes in your life. I love that. I love that. Thank you for sharing it. Because, you know, um, as you said, it's not either or. You don't jump ship to toward another one. There's this in between area, and I think I, I like to refer to it as the messy middle. It's the cocoon phase of you know between the caterpillar and the butterfly, and then you go in again and you go out, and you know it's it's a yeah. continuous thing. But we need to appreciate that we need to go through the messy middle to get to the other phase, um, and it's an ongoing process, and that's okay as well. Dr. Gayla, I'm so grateful yeah. for you. Thank you so much again for sharing your energy and your wisdom and your knowledge. And um, I'm looking forward for uh, a lot of women to hear your message and to get a lot of value and a lot of guidance from everything you share today. And um, thanks again so much for having me. <laughs> You're welcome. My pleasure. Well, I hope that today's episode again is all about you taking care of you you understanding and listening to your gut and your intuition and to understand that it does take time to transition and that's okay to give ourselves the time and the grace period to be able to do that in a way that suits us and suits our life and everything that goes along with it. And until then, as always, I wish you love, abundance and prosperity and I'm going to see you next time. Bye for now. Thank you for listening to the Empower to Grow podcast. For further engagement with a tribe of empowered women, join my Facebook group, Empowered to Grow, or visit my website, www.hananelbasha.com. I'll catch you on the next episode. And until then, know that empowered you empowers others. Love, abundance, and prosperity to you all.